A couple of weeks ago, we had Vacation Bible School here at St. Francis, and the theme for it was diving into friendship with God. Well, on the first day, I walked across a plank to enter the gym thinking I was entering a ship. I was later told that I was walking into the ocean with all the fish and the characters for the week. But I like the idea of a ship because a ship is a symbol of the church. It dates back to at least Tertullian in the second century. When he was writing about baptism, he made reference to the disciples in the boat being tossed about by the storm. He said that that little ship did present a figure of the church and that she is disquieted in the sea, that is, in the world by the waves, that is, by persecutions and temptations. The Lord, through patience, sleeping as it were, until roused in their last extremities by the prayers of the saints, he checks the world and restores tranquility to his own. Now, if the church is a ship, then we as Christians who are members of the church, we're on this ship, making our voyage to our homeland. I read something from a convert to the faith who described it like this. He said, there's a king who established a country on the far side of the ocean. It's called the Celestial City, and its roads are paved in gold. The founder of this new country is God, and the country is heaven, and you and I are the ones he's chosen to join the voyage. The ship that he built is the Catholic Church, the captain is the Pope, and the crew are the bishops, priests, and deacons. The navigation charts and GPS are scriptures. The maps are sacred tradition. Our food for the journey is the Eucharist, and our water is the grace of baptism and the life that flows from Christ through the sacraments. The power that moves the ship is the Holy Spirit. And then he ended this description by saying, everything we need to reach heaven can be found within the Catholic Church. But just because we have everything we need doesn't mean the journey is going to be easy. When you're sailing through the ocean, at some point, you're going to encounter storms. Look at the disciples in our gospel today. They, they were on the Sea of Galilee, which is really like, is a, it's just like a large lake. And they encountered storms in that. Um, and their reaction to the storm, it was panic. But Jesus, he did the opposite. And it really caught them by surprise because he was calmly sleeping in the midst of the storm. To them, it was as if he didn't even care. Well, there's a spiritual lesson in this for us. If we look at our first reading, we're nearing the end of the book of Job. Job had lost a lot. He lost his children, his possessions, his health, and even his wife and friends turned against him. He was faithful to God through it all. But at the same time, he was confused. His friends, they tried to explain things to him, but they were really just trying to flatter themselves with all their knowledge. Well, after his last friend spoke, God stepped in and gave his speech. He spoke to Job about the wonders of creation. Where was Job when he laid the foundation of the world? Where does light and darkness dwell? He speaks about how he created the sea and determined the boundaries of its waters and where its proud waves would be still. Well, in a certain sense, Job is in the boat. He's living in right relationship with God, but he's being tossed about by the storms of life. And this is why he's so confused, because if he's been faithful to God, then why are so many bad things happening to him? Well, in the spiritual life, brothers and sisters, things don't always make sense to us. We can't understand everything, and in the moment, God may not want us to understand. And it's humbling because we realize that we're not in control, but God is, which should be a relief because if God allows a difficulty, then we know good will come from it. But what's important is how we respond. We can respond with fear, or we can respond with trust. We can respond with panic like the disciples, or we can be more like Jesus and calmly sit in the boat. Therese of Lisieux, she's a saint who responded with trust. She was going through dryness in prayer, and she felt abandoned by God. And she, re she related that to today's gospel. She said, Jesus was sleeping as usual in my little boat. 
I see very well how rarely souls allow him to sleep peacefully within them. Jesus is so fatigued with always having to take the initiative and to attend to others that he hastens to take advantage of the repose I offer him. And so Therese, she didn't panic, but she remained calm and she trusted in Jesus and she did her best not to wake him while he was sleeping. Now someone may wonder, how can someone like this remain so calm in the midst of external difficulties? Well, Jesus' Jesus's reaction in the gospel, I really think, gives us a clue to this. So when the disciples find him asleep, it's not because he doesn't care, but because he's in control. And when God's in the boat with you, there's nothing to fear, even when, if it, even when it seems like he's asleep. Um, what's kind of interesting about him sleeping is that um, him sleeping in the midst of the storm, uh, there's various passages throughout Scripture that kind of relate to this. One, for example, comes from the book of Psalms. The psalmist says, In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. And what this passage tells us is that when we rely on God, he gives us joy, peace, and security. And when external difficulties increase, if we trust in him, he'll respond by giving us inner peace. And Teresa of Avila, she's someone who encourages us in this attitude. She says that when we encounter external difficulties in the world, we should look within ourselves and there we'll find the master who never abandons us. She says the less consolation you feel you receive from without, the greater the gifts he'll give you within. Now, that doesn't mean that we should go out and start beating ourselves up and putting ourselves through all sorts of physical torment, but if we allow it, our difficulties can, can, be, can become opportunities to turn to God and grow in trust. Some areas that people may lack in trust today are one, prayer, um, when we want God to answer our prayer how we want him to and when we want him to. Um, basically, we don't trust God because we don't believe that he'll answer in a way that's beneficial for us and at the right time. Another area that we may lack in trust is when a lot of things come at us and we start complaining or even get angry at God for allowing these things to happen. We don't trust that he's with us and he's going to bring good out of those difficult situations. And then one that uh, came to mind as I was uh, just thinking about this homily is uh, we don't, sometimes we may not trust God in regards to our future. And I'd argue that you probably see this a little bit more in New Orleans, but usually when someone doesn't trust God in regards to their future, they may turn to things like fortune tellers and tarot card readers and mediums um, because they're trying to determine what's in store for them. But what they're saying when they do this without even realizing it is, God, I don't trust you in regards to my future, and so I'm going to seek a different power to give me the answers I need which that never turns out good because without realizing it, they're seeking their answers from the demonic. With that being said, all of us are on this ship to the celestial city, and we're going to encounter difficulties on the way. And our faith and trust in God, it'll be put to the test. But one thing to remember as we make this journey is that, as St. Paul said, we no longer live according to the flesh. Our faith should give us a new perception of things. For example, from a human standpoint, uh, the cross, it looks like a defeat, but faith, it tells us that it's victory in life. And if we look at things through the eyes of faith, um, especially the storms in life, then we can see in those difficulties little moments to place our trust in God because he's ultimately the one in control. Jesus, uh, I think it's significant that he fell asleep in the stern of the ship, because the stern of the ship is where the ship is steered from. And if Jesus is relaxed and calm in the midst of the storm, and he's the one steering the ship, then we should be too, by not responding with panic and fear, but placing our trust in him. Because even if it seems like God's asleep in your life, he's really lovingly guiding you through the storms of life to that new country in heaven with him.